boy, have I got something for you guys today. Right there, 100% raw. When I switched to raw food from a meat eater's diet, I was able to speed up my workouts radically. My recovery improved a lot quicker. And this allowed me to have more energy and dynamics. I used to think that there was no possible way that I could ever build any kind of muscle or have any kind of tissue or, or, or be any kind of athlete if I didn't eat meat and chicken and fish and beef and all sorts of things that walked on four legs. As that's evolved now, I'm here in the state that I've been doing this now for over a decade. Uh, won titles and um, national titles in bodybuilding, no chemicals, no drugs, none of that stuff, and went to the world championships and had a lot of wonderful experiences. I, I was able to do that not because I was eating meat, because I wasn't. In fact, it was easier, faster, simpler, more fun, and healthier. So let's go through a routine of what Wade does every day. First thing in the morning, he starts with a glass of water. We're 75% water, so the first thing I do in the morning is I want to get all my body is hydrated because we worry about toxins, we worry about chemicals, and I have a little saying that I go, the solution to pollution is dilution. If you look at the longest living, healthiest populations in the world, they all live high up in the mountains and they drink great glacier runoff water. And the Japanese have, have created a way that we can turn regular tap water into as close approximation as possible as that glacier runoff milk that these long living, healthy, vibrant populations are used to drinking. And the cool thing is you just set up, once you have the machine set up, you just turn on the water, right? We press the button and I'm able to adjust the pH. I'm actually able to make five different types of water here. I mean, I make water that'll clean all the oil-based pesticides that may have gotten onto my food. I've got water that can disinfect. I got water that I can put on my beauty skin for my skin to make my skin nice. And I have at least one of these jars before I go out and, and do my exercise in my morning. We're creating a massive antioxidant. Vitamin C, for example, really, really good vitamin C might be minus 50 or minus 100. And now we're able to get an electrical based antioxidant of around minus 300 right here. So what happens is, if you remember when we had all those little swirling electrons, that little cloudiness inside there, I'm pouring that inside my body and not like a, an electron that I get from a food where it's got to be broken down into an ash and take the free radicals. This way I can deliver the electron right into the cell. Now one of the key reasons of why I was able to train faster, harder, and longer than other people on probably less food and that sort of thing is because I was putting so much antioxidant power based on this technology into my body that was flushing out all the damage that I was doing from exercising. So what I do in the morning after I've consumed my my water is I get up and I jump on my mini trampoline on my on my rebounder and what this does is this crits all hundred trillion cells in my body acting like little pumps. Each one goes like this and by doing that I'm not just working my muscles like when we go to the gym. I'm actually working my brain cells, my liver cells. I mean, how do you do a push-up for your pancreas? No impact on the joints. My knees don't get hit, hurt. My hips don't get hurt. We have people in their 90s on this thing. After rebounding, Wade and I got our fresh air, sunlight, and cardio in the mountains of beautiful Sedona, Arizona, where we happened to be that day. Forget treadmills at the gym. Fresh air and sunlight is the way to go. There's nothing like starting your day with some good stretching to open up those energy pathways in your body. Mm -hmm. I'm really like a non-conformist stretcher, if you will. It's, I didn't fit into classes very well when it came to stretching. I tried the stretches, and I'm just not naturally a great stretcher. But when I just said, well, how would I just do what I feel like? Then stretching becomes really, really fun. When you contract the muscle really hard, uh, you actually stretch the other side of the muscle. So when I do a, a strong bicep contraction, I'm actually stretching my tricep. So you don't do the same stretches every day? No, I, I don't do the same stretch. I just do whatever. If I feel tension in the body, then I stretch it. If I don't feel tension there, I don't worry about it. Oh, that feels good. We live in the most connected times ever but we're oftentimes the most disconnected right. from the people that we care about. Right. You know, so... Disconnected from the earth, disconnected from each other, disconnected from the nature. You know? 
I'll stretch this. So she's stretched right now. She's stretching out my lats. <laughs> yeah, I love that one. Hi, bye. Once you stretch, pop up. You're ready to go for a run. You know, they email you, they're right there, how do I gain more weight, how do I do this? Well, first thing, you get to get your mind in control. It's really a mental thing, and if I get my mind in the right place, the food, the nutrients, the right things will naturally flow into my life, flow into my cells, and they do that when you're relaxed, not when you're tense. Well, manly men out there are gonna see the chapter on this DVD called Meditation and go, I don't care about that, I just wanna have big muscles, just tell me what to do. Well, you know, it's interesting because um, I didn't have very good genetics for building muscles, I, very, I didn't have the right structure, the right muscle mass, my, everything, I, had, I, I really had a lot of strikes against me when it came to that way. I wasn't naturally a muscular guy, or it didn't come easy for me. And one of the things I, I, I recognize is that the top athletes in the world always seem to have a better mental state. And I first came across a Dr. Lee Poulos had a bodybuilding CD and he was a, a, psych, a psychologist that had developed mind techniques about breathing and visualization and stuff like that. And I thought, wow, well I, I knew that other athletes had used this and I, I started doing it as a bodybuilding. And then literally after a while, by getting into these states, I was able to command my body to do things, and yes, this is possible. Here's a regular person moving their bicep. There's a little bit of flexion and something happened. Now, or I can tense that muscle up really hard and flex it and develop as much. Now, what's different? There's no more weight on my hand. Nothing's changed other than the mental connection that I've put into it, and over time, you know, I can connect it like this, or I can just move it like this big difference. So you build the literally that mind-body connection, connection. And, and, and that's just not a, an, a, an idealist kind of slogan or something. There is an actual reality. Here I was this, you know, lifting guy, lifting, you know, eating weight, e e you know, eating all this protein and lifting weights and all this sort of stuff. But as I develop, and you think that's the way to build that, but as I got more peaceful with myself, as I got more centered with myself, and got deeper into meditation. Now my workouts took on a whole new dimension. Now I was able to produce stuff instead of struggling to get in straight to shape or lose body fat or gain muscle. It became easy because my mind was not resisting me. My subconscious was not resisting me. And that's real strength. Strength isn't in the muscle. Strength isn't in the body. Right. Strength is really in the soul that permeates through the mind that then comes out in physical expression. So it's three stage. Meditation gets you to the top and you can come top down as opposed to trying to build myself from the physicality back up. So every morning after I get back from my, my initial uh, cardiovascular workout, I put myself a quick shake. Water is a big thing and of course one of the biggest nutrients that we require. I throw a little bit of digestive enzymes because I believe the average person they don't need that much protein but if you're lifting a lot uh, more amino acid blends from a variety of plant sources. Now I like plant source protein much better because the old saying is oh wait how do you get your protein you know you need how many grams of this and that and really it's not what you eat it's what you are able to absorb and once you've switched over to a plant-based um, products and you start putting this in your body for a couple weeks as opposed to like synthesize overly process it you can't believe the difference in how you feel how you digest and instead of taking in hundreds and hundreds of grams of protein you'll you'll cut your protein by probably at, right off the bat 50 percent and maybe even a little more as your body gets cleaner and more efficient to to digest this now a lot of people are going to look at this and say that's a tiny little blender and you're a big guy and people most people have vitamixes which you know can hold four times that what's yeah i mean they're going to look at that and say how's that big guy going to get anything out of that little tiny drink you know that's a really good point and we're so consumed with um mass of food as opposed to the density of food. So in other words, it's how much life is in there and also how much my body's able to extract. So when I first start switching over to, um, you know, from a carnivorous, you know, meat eating mentality, like, you know, you know, over a decade ago, my mind was like exactly asking that question, how do I possibly 
go from eating all this meat and stuff, but what I didn't understand is I might have been eating hundreds of grams of stuff or all this stuff, but my body was only absorbing a fraction of it because it had all this crud and sludge and all this sort of stuff in it. As I switched over, when I first started eating, I couldn't get enough raw food. And really what I found out is my body was actually starving for nutrients. Even though I was eating a lot of calories or proteins or fats, I wasn't actually absorbing it. So when I started eating all the raw foods and the, the foods that naturally occur in the way nature made it, you know, like all the other animals do, for about a month or two, I was just literally, I was eating massive quantities of food. It was like, my body's like, oh my God, you're getting fed. And then as it went off, I, I kind of, it's kind of like a refeeding period where you get nutrified, as I say. You know, you, your body fills up its nutrients uh, inside it. And then it's like, well, I just don't need that much. And most people are shocked that in the course of a day now, because I've been doing this for a long, long time, I'll have uh, one of these shakes in the morning. You'll see this, you know, this afternoon we'll go in and I'll have a massive salad with, to get lots of fiber and that sort of thing and all sorts of vegetables and nutrients. And then maybe a, a shake in the evening or go out with my friends for a nice raw meal where we'll have some of the, fun, the funner stuff in the raw food with some of the desserts and stuff. And that's it. And people are like, how is that possible you can build muscle? But if you look at moose, you look at this giant moose in the forest, it's 1,500 pounds walking to the swamp, and what does it eat? It eats some moss and some grass and that sort of thing, and it's massive and huge. But again, it's not eating candy bars and potato chips or, or gooey, sludgy foods that stick inside the system that plug up its ability to assimilate it. When I first started out, I was so concentrated. How much weight can you lift? How much can you bench? How much can you squat? What's interesting, the more successful I got in the sport of bodybuilding, got better and better and better, I actually was using less and less weight even though the individual mo body parts were actually stronger. My mind-body connection improved so much. I was able to take a weight that was a fraction of what I could actually lift and work my muscles so much harder. The weight's not that important, the intensity is. So just to give you an example, I can throw this weight up here and not work my body that much, or I can muscle it up with the tension, like this, and work my biceps really hard. So exercise should be as much concentration as it is perspiration. I can get a full body workout in 30 minutes but very very high intensity. Just by, you now I can concentrate again. When I do competitions 100% raw, no cooked food, no anything like that. Like it is pristine because I'm at a very, very high performance level. 30 minutes is all I need, probably three times a week. And it, I, I usually get between four, four and five workouts in a week. All right, put that a shake and blend it. <laughs> awesome is an acronym that stands for air first, get your breathing down first, water, the best, highest quality water you can possibly put in your body, exercise, do exercise every single day, something that you like, something that you value, Lots of sunlight, look at your nutrition from a sunlight component. O is the optimizers, that's where you get into enzymes, of probiotics, vitamins, minerals, essential fatty acids, amino acids, which is going to vary for each person. Then there's the mental beliefs and attitude, putting good food in our mind, good mooding in our attitude. And the final thing is education, testing and coaching, the etc. That's the awesome formula. Just because I put something in my mouth doesn't mean it actually got into my cell. So it's really about how much actually gets digested, absorbed, and utilized. I think cleaning the body first, uh, feeding the body is, is the next step. So I got uh, release, rebuild, and revitalize. And then revitalize, this is where you're getting into, I think where Marcus, I think you're really an expert on this, is finding the wild crafted foods that are grown right out in nature that have all sorts of things that we don't even know in science that give you a lot of vitality, energy, and, and power. One of the things that I love to do everywhere I travel is find myself a nice uh, organic salad bar. And I make what I call a rainbow salad. Celery. This is actually the gorilla's favorite food. Celery. Celery is the gorilla's favorite? Yeah, this is. And the real super secret, I think, to building muscle is look at moose and elk and all these things sprouts. Holy God, look at that. I, I just load this up. And guess, here's the best part. You got no sprouts on there? The sprouts, 
the sprouts don't weigh much. All this stuff usually goes by the pound, so you really get the value when, you, when, you, when you're doing. When you're... There is the finished product. Look at the colors. I mean, that just looks so appealing. There is no way I could fit all the information on this one little video. You have got to get the DVD.